О. His shoes are too small. His shoes are too small. Oh. All right, are we ready this morning? Praise the Lord. Today, my list, we're going to continue from last Sunday. I, I started just a very short brief last week um, and this morning will be about 45 minutes we need to uh, lessen like stop early because my wife needs to interpret for our local church and so we need to be sure we're veil we're ready uh, and set up for that live video but before we get started I'd like to ask for prayer from you um, specific prayers and also fasting this week I want to clarify it first we need to pray there's you know for three days starting tomorrow the 20th 21st and 22nd so Monday Tuesday Wednesday and this is a request from uh, our multicultural uh, ministries leadership brother Brett Chavis and we want to pray for unity and there's some three things specific on monday we would like to pray for uh pr protection and elimination of the coronavirus specifically to stop that spread the second day on tuesday we want to continue and pray that god would have divine favor upon our death and call deaf leaders into the ministry and then on the third day which would be Wednesday we need to specifically pray for revival within our multicultural ministries not just only the deaf ministry but all the multicultural ministries that we have in the UPCI uh, we've got French uh, Spanish uh, just all sorts of different cultures that we have and, and we want revival amongst all these ministry and the reason is because we see that the coronavirus has spread throughout the whole world and you know we know that God is coming soon and we want to have revival we need those that don't know to be filled with the Holy Ghost to receive truth before the rapture takes place and we want revival amongst those people and a harvest so those three specific things we need to pray for in addition to the prayer we encourage you to pick one of those three days um, some people you know they may not have the ability because of health you know to fast because of, of diabetes or some sort of health condition and that's understandable uh, the thing is you can specifically fast a specific food or something um, you can choose you know no breakfast no lunch no dinner you can you know help yourself by maybe eating a cracker with some water just however however you feel it's important if you drink water you know to keep yourself hydrated and not passing out that would be a, a full day of, of fasting but it's your choice and the reason we need to fast is because we want the Lord to see that we are in unity and we want to hear from the Lord and that we want him to pour out his anointing and we want him to pour out revival and that we are in unity together for his his you know his his anointing for his kingdom and this class asks that you pray this morning for the anointing and we're not able to go meet in our local assembly like we've always done so I'm, I'm teaching here in my basement thankful we are thankful for the technology that we have but let's go ahead and pray Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you're with us this morning. We appreciate your presence. You're with us. We thank you, Lord, for, for giving us another day. 
We look forward to your word once again to study it in the gospel. And, and we ask that you would continue. We need the anointing in this class, this lesson. The house to house Bible study. Lord, we pray that the word would go out as I teach. Lead me, Lord, that those that are hungry would find your word. We pray your anointing in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Before I get started on today's lesson, last Sunday, We left off where the question was, how do we know what to do, or what, where to go, which is the right way? You know, what, what's the, how do you get saved? You know, what is the right direction? And Jesus had been talking to Thomas. Because Thomas asked, how can we know the way? That was in John 14, verse 5. And I, I just, I saw this this morning, and I wanted to add verse 6 to this because Jesus responded to Thomas. In John 14 and 6 it said, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So I just want to expand and explain just a moment on this scripture. I can't give you exact date. I think it was in 1998, that year. I had received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I was just so hungry and I was you know, wanting to know God. I wanted to know more. I wanted to know everything I could about Him. I was just very passionate about it. I wanted to just dive into the Word. And at the time, my pastor was Ron Haney. He was our bishop for a while before he passed away. He preached and he preached. And he told me this message. He showed me this scripture, but I didn't understand. That was before I got the Holy Ghost. I really didn't understand. And I would I would look at it and I would you know read it over and over and it just did never made sense to me comprehensive. And in the process I had attended a Bible college course, Texas Bible College on a Monday night, every Monday night, and I was learning the word. And we would move forward with that. But I'll let you know, one night I had a friend. We were studying the Bible. You know, we were just kind of hanging out at that time. We were focusing on the Word of God as we were relaxed. We were looking at the Word. And at the time, this scripture here, it like jumped out at me. I saw it and it instantly came to my mind. And God gave me the understanding just instantly, just real quickly, what that scripture meant. It startled me. And I was amazed at how God did that. Just like one second. It just was instant. You know, I had struggled for a long time. I was, in my humanity, I tried to study. I tried to understand clear. But you know what, God? He gave it to me instantly. There was no words involved. It just, it hit me. It just automatically came to my mind, my and the understanding of it. I was in awe. And I've been clear ever since. So I want to share with you how God shared it with me. Many people become confused. And it says, No man cometh unto the Father. This is John 14, 6. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And I thought, oh, that's two people. You know, two. Uh-huh. Wait, well, you know what? No, wait a minute. That's not what the scripture means. You want to look at the English very carefully. It says, but by me. B-Y. 
It does not mean two. How? I want to go back to the very first part of the, of the scripture. It says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's very specific when it's connected to by me. How? I am the way, and it's by me. Jesus was speaking to Thomas. He was telling the truth. What is the way? There's a door. You know what? All over, there's different doors. People will enter, and they might enter the right way, or they'll enter the wrong way. People think, oh, this is the right church, but it's the wrong door. And then another person will go to this church, and they think that it's the right door. And there's different churches or different doors that they're accessing. Me, I would, hit a, I would hit a locked door. I would knock, and I wouldn't understand. And I would try another religion, and I, it didn't make sense. And the door wouldn't open to me. And, you know, there was just different ways. And I, and I was at the right door. And I knocked, and that door was open to me, and I received the truth and revelation, and so I encourage you to find that right door. And I am thankful that God led me to this truth. Now it's my responsibility to share with you and show you this scripture and my testimony of how God showed me the truth. Now the way you have to find the right door, you have to find find the right way. And Jesus said, I am that door. So that's the door. Jesus is the door. He's right there. Don't be looking other places. Now, the truth. Jesus gave warning. I think it's in Matthew chapter 24, I believe. It says, Jesus, you know, he says, many, many, many will be deceiving the multitudes. They will be deceived because of man. There's going to be different churches, different religions, opinions, and so forth. They will draw you away. Satan will use that as a tool to draw you away from the truth. And the truth means, you know, I already know the truth. So I need to share the truth with you. And what is the truth? It is the gospel, the word of God. It is the gospel. And people are just like, oh, there's two separate persons. No, that's not the truth. I'm telling you, that's not the truth. There is one God. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is God. And there are many different verses that will sh share the same message. But there are churches that do not follow the exact word of God. And, you know, I went to the priest where I grew up and I asked him about these scriptures and he says, oh, no, 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 no. And you wait a minute. What about this scripture? And he would, he would jump around to explain that. But I'm telling you, the Bible in itself, the whole thing is the truth. You cannot take parts of the Bible and make it your own. And leave the remaining part of the Bible alone. I'm telling you, the entire word of God is the truth. You can't pull pieces of it out and have your own religion. There are people who do that. There are religions who do that. But I'm here to tell you, truthfully, you cannot do that. Now, continuing the scripture, it says, and the life. What about eternal life? That's a question. And more specifically, When you receive the Holy Ghost, you all have eternal life. Your name will be put down in the book of life. You know the salvation? You're connected. And your name is put down in the book of life. Jesus is the life. The Holy Ghost will give you that new life, that light that you need. So these three things here in the scripture, you've got the way, if you have the way and the life, 
You can't be satisfied with just it. You have to have all three. You have to have the way, the truth, and the life. All is one. You have to have it. You can't take bits and pieces a part of it. It says here can, in the end of the scripture, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And how is that? Through the name of Jesus. That's the salvation. It's through his name. Jesus' name is the only way to be saved. You can't be baptized in the name of the Father. The reason is because Jesus came to this world. He became flesh. He became manifest in the flesh. He was God in the flesh. Jesus was God in the flesh. And the scripture, please someone find the scripture for me. Uh, I think it's in John, is it John 14, 9? Or John 9, 14? Find it. 9? Either 14, 9, 9, 14 or something. I'm sorry, but I want to I want to find that right scripture. Talking about the flesh, it's very clear. Right. Give me a moment, I'm going to look it up. First Timothy 3.16. Boy, interpreter was way off. So when we look at 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, Scripture reads that God was manifest. And that word manifest means in body. He appeared in the flesh. It's the emphasis is, is that God, who, who is God? It is Jesus. Jesus himself, he is God. He's God manifest in the flesh. I want to give you an example. God was manifest in the flesh, to reiterate. You know, he came in body. I'll give you an example of how to understand that. If you can picture a rubber glove, you know, the doctors, you know, they have gloves. And that's going to represent a body in this representation. If you blow it up, you know, the fingers will expand and it'll, it'll look like a balloon, like a balloon hand. With God, we cannot see him. He's invisible God. So how did he appear? He came in the flesh through Jesus Christ. He was able to walk amongst this earth. Just as so, like the same thing a doctor would put their hand in their glove. And so God looked down at the earth. And he said, I am too holy. I cannot touch the earth because the earth itself, the world, is dirty. But I want to go and I want to walk amongst the people. You know, the people, they thought, okay, well, you know, I'll just do my own thing. And if they looked upon God, they would die. And God knew that they could not look upon him. And so there's a story about Moses. Where... He, God would lead the people through the fire and through a cloud to show his presence. And you know, the Ark of the Covenant, if, he would, if anyone would have opened the Ark of the Covenant, they would die. And when they preserved the Ark, they would have to cover it as they would carry it a certain way, the Ark of the Covenant. 
if they would take off this covering, those around would die. Because it was so holy, his presence. Just giving you a background of this. So getting back to the story, God wanted to be in the presence of, of people. And so his plan was to send his son into the world. And so through Mary, she conceived Jesus Christ. And Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. And so God walked amongst the earth through Jesus Christ. Just like the doctor we put a glove on and you could see his hand. His hand is covered. God is covered through Jesus Christ. The flesh. So God was able to walk amongst the earth through Jesus Christ. And Jesus would say, you can't go on your own. You must come through me. You have to go through the name of Jesus. We are the body. And God doesn't have the flesh as he's in heaven. So we have to go through Jesus Christ and the name of Jesus Christ. That is how we make connection with God. And this here in the scripture says, I am the way. So we know that Jesus is the right way and he is the door. Jesus said, I am the door. You have access. If you knock, by knocking, it's through Jesus' name. You have access to enter in and you're able to communicate with God you know Jesus is God there's only one there's no separation there's one I just want to be clear so you understand that this morning many people think it's two separate persons no I'm hoping that you understand really clear because this is how God cleared it for me now I'm going to continue with this lesson. I'm going to move forward. You know, we had talked about the first, there was a problem amongst earth, and it was sin. So in the beginning, we know the story of, the story of creation unfolds. It's revealed in the book of Genesis. And we read about it, you know, chapters 1 through 4, how God created everything, in six days and on the seventh day he rested and he said it is good so we know that God made everything and he approved he said it is good he was he was content this was part of his plan and he was satisfied he was good he was going to rest on the seventh day. And in those creations, God created the Garden of Eden. And he placed a tree in the center of this garden known as the knowledge of good and evil. And God told Adam in Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, so the day that thou eatest thereof, meaning if you ever eat of this tree, thou shalt surely die. It was, it was a truth that God revealed to Adam. Gave warning to Adam, avoid eating this tree, be obedient. If you ever eat of that, you will die. And Adam, he understood. He accepted that. Now there became a problem and we see that there was sin and the sin was disobedience. So how did Adam and Eve sin? Well, they did eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. It was in the middle of the Garden of Eden and they were cast out of the garden. God cast them out. 
We can jump to Romans chapter 5, verse 19. It says, For as by one man's disobedience, and we know that this man is in reference to Adam, it says, Many were made sinners. And it goes back to the beginning of time where there was Adam and he was disobedient and that carried through all the rest of the remaining generations. There was a problem. Disobedience was a sin. Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And this scripture, this to interpret that, to expand on the meaning, we all have sin, and we want to come close to God, but there's a separation. And I just shared with you that God can't touch the earth because of the sin. And so he had to find a way to be able to walk amongst man, and he, he created Jesus Christ. The body of Jesus Christ that was God manifest in the flesh. So we've come to a key point here. It says that since it was through disobedience that we were all made sinners, it will take obedience to bring us back into the relationship with God that he desires. So God wants that relationship back. That he created with Adam and Eve back in the garden. But they disobeyed, so the only way to get that back is to be in obedience to God. God has given us an opportunity to obey. God wants a relationship with people. Now there's three things that is in obedience. There's burial. No, I'm sorry. I gotta get this straight in my head. There's death, burial, and resurrection. That is the that is the message of the cross. I want to teach you about this as we move along in this lesson. So for being obedient, how, how, how do we become obedient? We know that that's the sin of disobedience. And the solution to that sin is obedience. We must be obedient to the gospel. Now, the angel spoke to Joseph about Mary, his wife. They were engaged, his wife-to-be. They hadn't been married, but they were promised. And she was pregnant. She conceived the Holy Ghost. And Joseph thought that she had been unfaithful. But an angel came to Joseph and to calm his concern. And, and it was explained to him that who she carried was the Holy Ghost. And his name would be Jesus. Here in the scripture it says, That which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. The angel is speaking to Joseph here saying that Mary will give birth to a, a boy child, and you will call him Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Find it Matthew chapter 1, verses 20 through 21, to get those scriptures. So here we see that God was manifest in the flesh. He appeared through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was the flesh that God appeared and we see that from 1 Timothy 3 and 16. The name of Jesus has to be applied. And again, the angel said, call your son Jesus. Very specifically, 
You know, in the Bible, it is all capital letters. J-E-S-U-S. -S. They're all capital letters in the scripture. You can find it. And it was a serious thing. It said, for he shall save his people. From their sins. Matthew 1, verses 20 through 21. There is one, one God. One, not two. Now, the question we follow here is, who was Jesus? Who was Jesus? Well, the angel continued to speak to Joseph in verse 23. Okay? If we continue on in this, this passage, it says, They shall call his name Emmanuel. E-M-M-A-N-U-E-L. And that means what? It was interpreted... The meaning of that name, it says, God with us. God with us. Now take a look. The underline. God with us. God is Jesus. Yes, Jesus, God is with us. He is Emmanuel. God wanted to come to this earth. So he put himself in the flesh through Jesus Christ. That is how man can be saved, to be drawn to him. The obedience. There is death, the burial, and the resurrection of the cross. And I'm going to continue and sharing that with you as we move along. So God came to earth and he wants his people to be with him. So Jesus walked the earth. In his ministry God is with us God with us there's not two separate persons no Jesus is God and want that clear it's very it's it's very clear here it's emphasized in the word God with us Jesus Christ was the mighty God praise the Lord hallelujah we're going to move to John chapter 1, verse 1, and then we'll jump down to verse 14. It says, and the Word was God. Okay, so the Word, the Gospel. We've got the Bible. We've got the Gospel. This is God. This is His Word. It's the, you know, spoken Word of God. Where is everything from? Where is God from? It's the Word. It is the Word. That's where it began. And the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh. Right here it says, made. Made flesh. The Word was made flesh. So God, He, was, he created man. He created the earth in six days. His spoken word. And the Holy Ghost created Jesus Christ in Mary's womb. The Word was made flesh. The living Word. The Word walked among us. And the verse says, and dwelt among us. The Word. He touched people. He spoke to people. He gave miracles, signs and wonders, healings. He rebuked the demons out of people. There's a story how the demons was cast out into a group of swines. And they, they went over a cliff. He commanded the calming of the seas and the waters and the wind. And they obeyed and they calmed down and was quiet. And the, the disciples was in awe. And they're like, who is this man with us? He is Jesus. Who is this man? He is the living word. He is the living word of God. He is God. He is the word. Hallelujah. Now moving along, the question is, what is the gospel? We know the gospel is the word. We call the Bible the gospel. 
Now look at Paul, what he wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, following verses 1 through 4. I'm trying to keep an eye on the time. It's uh, the word Paul was speaking. He said, I declare unto you the gospel. And it says, by which also ye are saved. Now, if you go back to the scripture, why was Jesus born? To save the people. And it's right here. By which also ye are saved. How that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. Now, hold that thought. Now, I want you to see it. It's written in blue here. This for a purpose. And that he was buried. And that he rose again on the third day. According to the scriptures. Now, here it's talking about the scriptures. That is the word. Simple. The word. The gospel. The gospel is the word. The word is the gospel. And the gospel is the scriptures. This is God's word. This is God's word. The word was God. The word was made flesh. So you, you hear people commenting and, you know, making posts on Facebook and, you know, everywhere talking about the Bible and how amazing and, you know, how, you know, the that this Bible survived, you know, the fires and the storms and, you know, the tornadoes. But you know what? How can a house be burned down and the Bible still remain? I'm telling you, it's the Word. It's the living Word of God. It's His Word. It will never, never pass away. It will never die. It will never die. The word is alive and it will never die. It will never pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word will remain. So now I want to share with you a thought. And I have seen some people threaten the Bible. Like, you know, they're going to destroy it, you know, tear it up and, you know, cut it and, you know, try to tear the word and so forth. But I'm telling you, it is the word of God. It's his words. If you try to destroy the words of God, God will punish you somehow. And I, I have seen two situations where two deaf have, have destroyed the word. And both were thrown into jail. And I didn't think about it. Oh, I thought, oh, don't mess with God. Don't mess with God. I'm just telling you, don't. If you want to try it, I'm telling you, I'm warning you that God, he will punish you somehow for trying to destroy his word. It is his word. It's alive. So I'm telling you, don't. Don't play around with God. It is a serious thing. Now, to the key point here, the gospel is the death burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I know it can be confusing because we see gospel or the word, you know, is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The gospel, that's the message. So we're going to go back to 1 Timothy, verse 3.16. It says, God was manifest in the flesh. He was the word. Jesus came to this earth. He died upon the cross. They nailed him to the cross. God was on the cross. Jesus, the word, was on the cross. And he died. The word, it was buried. They buried Jesus in the tomb. He was covered. He was prepared for his death, for his burial. But he rose again.
the word came alive and he walked among us and he ascended and he's coming back. He is going to come back. After his resurrection, he did walk amongst the earth and visited his disciples. But I'm telling you that word, the word is alive. So we come to this, this page, this, this slide, it's talking about the salvation. We see the word death, we see the cross. And we know that God was manifest in the flesh. This is God on the cross. This is Jesus Christ, but it's the flesh that God was manifest in. He was buried and he did ascend, he was resurrected. Now we're going to apply this spiritually and compare it to man, to you. And you think, well, how do I know what is the right way? How do I go? You know, just like Thomas, Thomas wanted to know, Jesus, how do I find the way? And Jesus spoke. He says, I am the way, Thomas. I am the truth. I am the life. The way. Oh, here's the way. Jesus is the way. So I have to repent for the sins that I have done in my life. Jesus, save me through his name. Follow Jesus through his way, the way of the cross. So I, I repent and I turn away from the sin. I follow Jesus Christ. He went to the cross, so I die out. He opens up that door to salvation for me. Salvation. Okay, we've got repentance. Now, we know that after the, the, the cross, there was a burial. So we apply this burial as baptism. Water immersion. You've got to go down in the water. You're buried in the water. And why is that? To remove the sin and wash the way. You've got to be washed away. The sins that were committed must be washed away and wiped away and removed. It's a washing away of the sin. And you continue through that door and you find, you say, oh, Jesus said, wait. He told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem because the promise would be given. And the disciples said, well, what, what, is, what is this? Okay, we'll wait in the upper room. We're going to pray until the promise comes. And the, what happened is the Holy Ghost came. And it brought life. It resurrected them from the death of, of this flesh life that they had spiritually they were dead and they became alive. And Jesus said again, that I am the way and I am the truth and I am the life. So here we see the plan of salvation and, and the salvation is for you. Salvation is for you. And I hope this is clear for you this morning. Jesus is the way. He is the truth and he is the life. He is our resurrection. And the only way we get resurrected is through him. We've got to be baptized in his name. We must be obedient. We need to repent and turn away from our sin. No longer follow the old way. We must follow him. I think I need to find a stopping point here. I just want to share this one slide, though, this last slide here. And 1 John 3.16, it speaks very clear. It says, hereby, and it means by this action, according to the scripture. Perceive or know. So hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. I know this could be confusing, but look at this picture. We see this picture. It represents the crucified hands of Jesus Christ. 
He is standing here. He is God in the flesh. He is the Word. He laid down his life. His action, we see his love. The love of God. It says, it should say the love of Jesus. But the emphasis here is the love of God. So we know that God's love was through Jesus Christ. He laid down his life for us. Jesus died for us. He went to the cross. He was crucified for who? For us. What is that? What, what do you mean? For salvation. What was the purpose? It was salvation. For eternal life. For wiping away your sins. For saving you. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for sending your son. The word that came alive in Jesus Christ. If it had not been for God's plan, we would have been eternally stuck with the sin. And we would have had to continue following the plan that Moses preached the message. Where the priest would have to go behind the veil and plead for our sins to be removed one more year. And the sacrifice of those animals, of the blood that represented a washing away, and the breaking of the shoe bread, and the fire, and the, in, the incense that would draw the attention of the Lord to look down and remove the sin of man. And people depended on the high priest. But now we no longer need a high priest. And the pattern of that, the Old Testament, because... We can go before Jesus Christ. He is our high priest. We don't have to go through a man any longer. In the Catholic Church, they go to the priest. And they talk to the priest. But that's not the way. That's not the way. You go to the Father, the Jesus Christ. He is the way. You don't go through man. I was there. I know. I would, I, would, I would confess, I would confess, I would confess, and I'd be like, what's the purpose of this, of confession? And as I got older and older and older, I would, you know, still continue to go to the priest and ask for, you know, confession. And I would ask him, I'd say, you know, what about one God? And, you know, I would talk about the scripture, and I'd searched about it, and I found on my own, and I knew I was wrong. I had been deceived. From the history of my life since I was born. And we would follow how we were taught. I followed how I was taught and I would just play along and I accept it. I'm telling you, I'm warning you, there are many who are deceived and I was one of them. But I am so thankful that I found the truth, the Word of God, and it is through Jesus Christ. He said he is the truth, the way, and the life. He is the word, and it is here today. And I encourage you to get in there and study the word of God yourself. And I, and I know that God is with you. Just know that Jesus is the word. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. He is with you today, and he is for you, and he will help you. You begin to pray, and you begin to talk to the Lord. I know it's like... Well, I don't, I don't get an answer, but be patient. Be patient. God is testing your will. He's testing your faith. He's testing your commitment, how you will work. He's going to see what you do for him. He's there for you. He will be there for you. I need to stop here. It's 1050. I need to stop so we can get set up for interpreting our, our service. And... There's a possibility it would rain, so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Jesus. I'm so thankful that you've been with me today. Oh, Lord, I know you're awesome. You're the champ. The anointing I have felt today. You have given the word of revelation. I'm so thankful, Lord. I want, I want you to give to these people 
the same thing, not just to me, that they would have the revelation, that they would receive salvation, Lord, that we don't want to experience the wrath of God. We want to do what we can to reach out to people today, and they would receive their word. Lord, that you were created for man, salvation, and we all help, help them understand your plan, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.